Dr. Kathy Grief brings lunch for her and a girl named Morgan at the beginning of the film. The girl accepts her invitation to lunch and sits quietly while Kathy discusses melancholy and other human feelings. Kathy claims that she is working with the authorities to get Morgan access to the outside world. Morgan looks strangely at her own hands before frantically tossing the dishes aside. Dr. Kathy is stabbed after she leaps onto the table. Two medical professionals detain and sedate Morgan to save her. A risk management expert named Lee Weathers is called and asked for an immediate reaction, since an emergency occurred at Sinsect, a genetic engineering corporation. In order to further study the situation, she travels for a while before arriving at a remote region where Ted Brenner, the project manager, shows her to her accommodations. He offers to give Lee a tour of the entire facility, but she rejects it, since she needs to meet with the physicians right away. Her manager tells her that Lee should evaluate the problem once he departs, since someone in this lab committed a significant error. Dr. Amy Menser, Morgan's behaviorist, sits on her bed in the room as Lee enters, and it is evident that she doesn't respect personal space. Amy is pushed away by Lee's severe and professional approach. Afterward, Lee visits the kitchen, where she meets Skip Vronsky, the team nutritionist. Ted follows her to Kathy's room, where her rehabilitation is being watched. After that, Lee requests a private moment with Kathy, so they may talk about the details of the attack. Although Kathy's eye is still covered, she says that she feels better than she appears. Before the corporation chose to confine her inside the isolated chamber, she claims that Morgan used to be joyful and kind. Even though Morgan caused Kathy's injury, Kathy still has a lot of respect for her. Lee next encounters Dr. Simon Ziegler, who is in charge of the L9 project. He describes the project's purpose, how it was made, and how nanotechnology and synthetic DNA were integrated. Morgan is a synthetic person with human DNA. The invention of Morgan was their first successful venture, after two failed ones. After a month of her development, Morgan was already able to walk and speak due to the organism's quick growth. Simon claims that Morgan, a hybrid biological being with the ability to think and feel, is all they could have dreamed of. Morgan already resembles a mature woman after her first birthday. Following that, Simon plays Lee the video of the event and mentions that Morgan was exposed to the outside world at an early age, which the other people consider to be a mistake. He yet believes that with sufficient training, the initiative is moving accurately. To get to know Morgan better, Lee is shown around her room. Lee is kept outside the room for safety in light of recent occurrences. When they first meet, Morgan is kind and nice. She even constantly apologizes for injuring Kathy and claims that it was an accident. Morgan has a pleasant recollection of her and Amy in the woods after the medics had left. She feels most at ease around Amy since she doesn't treat her like a prototype, but rather a friend. Lee eats with the group for supper and gets to know the other doctors. Lee also meets the woman Morgan views as her mother, Dr. Louis Cheng. Lee is happy to see Louis since she admires her, and they even speak in Louis's language. Morgan is referred to as an object rather than a person with feelings, as she says that her job is to weigh danger against the company's profit. They also talk about a similar project in Helsinki, where the prototypes resulted in the fatalities of 21 researchers. According to Simon, Morgan is far more evolved than the rest. Later, Lee attempts to evaluate Morgan's behavior by watching past films of her, but the computer keeps freezing. She is surprised to see Morgan staring directly at her through the security camera, but she ignores her. That evening, Lee and Skip chat over cocktails. He mentions that he previously had a relationship with Amy, which Amy hears from a distance. Shortly after, Skip moves in and kisses Lee, but he immediately apologizes, and the two say goodnight. Amy visits Morgan's room in the meanwhile to spend some time with her. Before going to Morgan's cell to remind her of the next psychological exam, she turns off the cameras. Amy reassures her that as long as she keeps true to herself, everything will work out well. As a sign of their closeness and devotion, the two of them place their hands on the glass. Amy reassures Morgan that one day, she'll take her to the lovely Lake Navarre to ease her concerns. A recollection of Morgan and Amy spending a lovely day in the woods occurs to Morgan. Morgan comes up to a wounded deer that is impaled on a limb not far from where they are standing. Amy is shocked as Morgan abruptly snaps the creature's neck as a kindness. Dr. Alan Shapiro examines Morgan's psychiatric state the next day. He is required to examine Morgan while sitting outside the room, but he feels the conversation will be meaningless. Alan makes the decision to enter the room against the team's caution, stating that it is his responsibility to establish trust with the patient. He is shocked that Morgan, who is seated opposite him, is aware of his identity and the context of his visit. Alan asks Morgan first, why are you upset? To which she responds, I'm sad because of the situation with Kathy. Alan observes Morgan's regret after committing a horrific act. Morgan is then questioned about her time spent in the chamber and her feelings about being in prison. He continues to probe Morgan after she expresses her satisfaction, which causes her to feign tears. He is caught off guard when Morgan suddenly starts asking questions about Alan's daughter, who he seldom ever sees. Asking Morgan how she would respond, if he suggested the doctors put her to sleep, Alan loses his calm and begins yelling at her. Suddenly crying, Morgan breaks down and loses it. 
After gazing at her hands, Alan is pushed against the wall as Morgan lunges at The doctor is covered in blood when she bites onto his throat and pulls a piece out. The noise alerts the squad, and Darren makes another attempt to calm Morgan down. Nevertheless, Morgan attacks Darren and knocks him out while using Alan as a shield. The moment Lee attempts to pacify Morgan, the lights go out, and she disappears. Lee gets a tranquilizer right away to stop her from running away. For the first time in months, Morgan steps outside and notices Amy waiting for the evaluation results. She is relieved to see Amy, despite having blood all over her face, but is then completely shocked when Lee sedates her. Morgan awakens inside the lab and expresses regret for her behavior. The medical staff disagree on how to treat her and what would be best for the business. Simon convinces Cheng not to get rid of Morgan, since it would be a waste of their years of hard work, even though Cheng is convinced she will. Simon leaves when they decide to terminate the subject in the end. Lee, who has the highest position, approves the termination. Before getting ready for the surgery, the entire crew breaks down in tears, since Morgan has become a beloved member of their team and an integral part of their everyday lives. Morgan begs everyone in the room to spare her life, including addressing Cheng as her mother, but Cheng responds coolly by denying that she is Morgan's mother. Cheng administers the tranquilizer to Morgan and then expresses regret for failing her. After preparing the deadly injection, Darren decides against using it, and he and Brenda depart the lab. Lee intends to do it on her own when the medical staff is nowhere to be seen, but Ted discourages her. She assaults him and threatens to end him, but Amy shoots her with a sedative, making her fall asleep. Ted is standing outside as Lee is trapped in Morgan's room. Before the higher-ups show up, Lee begs him to let her escape, but he ignores her. Amy, Ted, Brenda, and Darren gather equipment to securely remove Morgan from the lab. Morgan is too weak to respond when Amy attempts to rouse her up, so Darren tries to get her to sit down. Nevertheless, Morgan's character changes, and she headbutts Darren. Darren loses his life when Morgan seizes the injection, and injects it into his chest. Ted attempts to stop her by putting a pistol to her face, but Morgan disarms him and finishes it. Ted returns to Morgan's chamber, but while Lee watches, she shoots him once again. Morgan says she feels like herself now that she is free as she glares at Lee. She ends the exchange and locks Lee within the glass enclosure. Brenda tells Skip to get ready to depart outside as she packs the supplies into the vehicle. Skip thinks something is off when he sees Amy going with Morgan, so he returns to the building to hunt for Lee. Brenda questions Amy about Darren's whereabouts when they are reunited, but Amy was speechless at the time. Brenda is approached by Morgan with a gun from behind, but Brenda fights back and engages Morgan in combat. She is easily overcome by Morgan, who then brutally murders her. While Amy is speechless, Morgan reassures her that she is secure with her. Morgan's motivation is retribution. When she returns home, Kathy is there and makes an effort to be cordial with her. But Morgan continues to kick her in the head until she passes out. Lee, in the meantime, succeeds in getting away by scaling the glass ceiling and shattering it. She finds Skip outside, still reeling from the horrific atrocities taking place inside, and tells him to get a weapon. Morgan comes into Cheng's room and approaches her while she records a video confession of the incident for Morgan's psychiatric evaluation. She receives a kiss on the forehead from Morgan, who then smothers her. This action is caught on camera. Lee discovers the lifeless Simon, hanging from a cupboard in another room. Undoubtedly Morgan's skilled work. As Lee goes to check out Cheng's room, Morgan jumps him. They start fighting and alternately toss each other across the room. They fight and end up where Amy's car is parked after tackling each other through the window. Skip tries to stop Morgan, but she throws him to the ground and drives away. Lee follows her into the woods in her car as well. Morgan repeatedly bumps Lee's car as she is driving, causing her to collide with a large tree. Amy begs Morgan to stop, but she keeps going, despite her complete lack of guilt for the damage she has caused. Lee makes it out of the accident and is saved by Skip who says he knows where Morgan and Amy are going. Morgan and Amy navigate the wide forest on their way to Lake Navarre, an excursion they had eagerly anticipated. Amy is on high alert and always carries a weapon, despite Morgan's assurances that she won't hurt her. When they reach their destination, Morgan sobs with delight at the stunning vista of the lake. She feels more alive than ever and is now able to enjoy the genuine independence she has always desired. In the meantime, Lee takes Skip's gun and heads into the woods to murder Morgan on her own. After she fires a shot, Morgan is drawn to her and resolves to follow her back into the woods to confront her. Lee attempts to shoot, but misses when she sees Morgan. Morgan overtakes Lee and attacks her from behind. The two tumble into the heart of the woods. They punch and kick each other and then resort to using stones and clubs. After several altercations, Morgan throws Lee to a tree trunk and impales her on a limb, exactly like the deer, but this time she shows pity and runs away. Lee frees herself and surprises Morgan by following her back to the lake. She bashes her with the rifle a few times and tosses it in the lake. She then keeps Morgan submerged until she drowns. Lee disarms a traumatized Amy and shoots her, and then finishes Skip off because he asks about Amy, thus leaving no witnesses. 
James Bryce, the CEO of the corporation, tells the other board members about the event and proclaims the Morgan Project a failure. When one of his colleagues inquires about Lee Weathers, Bryce responds that she is perfect. Lee travels to a nearby restaurant after completing her assignment successfully and makes a gesture resembling Morgan's by looking at her hands. Surprisingly, the similarities between Morgan and Lee go much deeper than what is implied. Lee was previously a prototype as well, as shown by their similar motions and superhuman abilities. Lee is simply doing an undercover mission to keep an eye on the project and compare Morgan's skills to her own. The company talks about Lee's excellence since, in contrast to Morgan. Lee was not programmed with a lot of human emotions, thus she is not flawed like Morgan. She is a successful product of their contemporary technology.